Hello and God bless you young people. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church where my pastor is, Dr. Johnny Calvin Smith. God bless you young people and thank you for joining me here for our Sunday School lesson. Now, of course, we'd love for you to be a part of what's going on here at the Mount Moriah Church on Sunday mornings. We have in-person Sunday school. So please, we'd love for you to come out and be with, out with the other young people as we study the word together. Now, of course, I know you're on summertime. And so I want to remind you that you still should be reading your Bible. Remember to pray and remember to do those things that are pleasing to God. Let's go ahead and study our lesson, but before we do, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for these young people. Lord, thank you. Lord, I pray that you would please help them and keep them safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Young people, our lesson for today comes from the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 10. Our lesson topic is Ruth marries Boaz. And the big idea of this lesson is Boaz worked things out so that he could marry Ruth. And so in our lesson, we want to kind of remember, this is our last lesson in the book of Ruth. And so we kind of want to remember what has happened throughout the lesson. If you remember, Ruth is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. Naomi used to be married to a person named Elimelech. Elimelech had two sons. Ruth was married to one and Ophrah was married to the other. Both Elimelech and his two sons have now died. Naomi tells Ruth and Ophrah to go back home and be with their family while Naomi goes back to be with her people. Ophrah agrees and Ophrah goes and she continues to live with her people. Ruth did not agree. And Ruth said, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Wherever you go and stay, I'm going to stay. Your God will be my God. In last week's lesson, we saw how Ruth and Boaz, who is a man, that they how they met and how Boaz began to take care of Ruth. In chapter three, Boaz has been, he's been talking to Ruth about how he is going to redeem her. Now, when you think about the word redeem, it's kind of like it's a thing where a person buys back a person. It's, it's not like for property. It's a person that has agreed to take care of another person. In this situation, that's what the word redeem means. He, is, he, will, he wants to take ownership in the sense of not to own, but that he will protect her. So Boaz is going to be seen, and you hear people, older people say that Boaz is a kinsman redeemer, it means he's taking care of someone. So now Ruth has to find a way, or Boaz has to find a way where this can happen because Naomi and Ruth are poor and they don't have anyone to take care of them. They don't have sons and they don't have husbands. So somehow this has to work out so Ruth and Naomi can be all right. And so Ruth, of course, like I just said, had no husband, but she did have her mother-in-law, Naomi, and Naomi owned a piece of land. So to make matters worth, worse, not only is Naomi uh, doesn't have a lot of money and they're poor and they don't, you know, have a lot of things, but now Naomi has this piece of land that she's not able to take care of. And so Naomi is now is seen like she has to sell the land. Now, one person could say, oh, that's cool. They can just sell the land, but that's not, things were different in that time. And so it was not the best thing for her just to sell the land. There was different ways in which God's people did things in that time. And so Naomi had that piece of land. Uh, these women could not work uh, for themselves. Naomi had to decide to sell the land. So many years before Ruth was born, God gave some special rules for his people to follow. One of the rules was that if a man died without having a son, 
one of his family members should marry his wife and take care of her. Now, Ruth had no children with her husband, so the man who bought her dead husband's land would need to marry her to follow God's rule. So Boaz wanted to marry Ruth and redeem her. Do you understand what that word means? You remember uh, that redeeming means not to own the person, but to make a vow to take care of that person. So Boaz has already been doing that. He's been taking care of her. You remember some of the things that he did in last week's lesson? He gave her extra grain from the ground. He gave her lunch. He gave her water. So he had already been doing a great job of protecting Ruth. Now, Boaz wanted to do this the right way. He wanted to do the right thing. So Ruth's dead husband had a family member that was closer to Boaz. Is, uh, this is, means that in order for this to go the way God wanted it to go, that you had to go in order of the closest family member. So there was a closer family member that the Bible doesn't tell us what the person's name was, but this person really should be marrying or redeeming Ruth. So Boaz said that I'm gonna go talk to this person. We don't know what this person's name was, but he goes out to the city gate. He meets him as the man is coming in and he says, I want to tell you about this person. I want to tell you about uh, this person named Naomi who has this piece of land. This relative wanted to redeem the land, but the relative changed their mind because redeeming the land, that means buying this land, meant that they had to marry Ruth. And so he says, oh no, I can't do that. I wanted the land, but I can't marry Ruth. And so now this man, this family member says, Boaz, you do it. I'm giving up my rights so you can marry uh, Ruth. You can marry her. And so that's exactly what happened. Boaz was able to marry Ruth. He redeemed her. Uh, they had a son and their son had a son. And I want y'all to know something very special about this story. Many, many years later, a very special son was going to be born from the same family. And his name was Jesus. Y'all know who Jesus is, right? Jesus Christ. Jesus was born to a woman named Mary and he was God's son. And so this is a beautiful story and it seemed like it was pretty bad at the beginning, but see how this story got better and better. You remember Ruth, she didn't have anything and she decided to go live with Naomi and then her and Naomi get back into the land and Ruth has to go work as a gleaner and she had to do all this hard work and labor, but she meets Boaz and Boaz begins to protect her and take care of her. And then in chapter three, they start to have a plan on how they were going to be together. And then in chapter four, they actually get a chance to be together and Boaz is able to marry her. And because of that, they have a son, a very special son and that son is going to be an ancestor of Jesus Christ. And so what we see, young people, that God is always working out things for his glory. That means that God always has a plan. Even if we don't know it, God always has a plan. What do we have to do? We have to trust God's plan and understand that he always knows what's best. What a beautiful story on how Boaz loved someone like Ruth. Guess what? God loves us just that much and even more. How do we know that? Because God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. God bless you, young people. Hope you've learned something. Have a great week.